Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, May 7, 2020. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. This is going to be a good one. I've got stuff. A, I have a laundry list, but B, it contains stuff that we're going to learn. You're going to learn from this video come hell or high water. There's going to be a lot of stuff. So you're not all going to learn the same stuff. We're not all going to absorb all the material on the first run. I'm going to give you a lot of stuff. You might want to have a pen and paper handy. Let's start right at the top. What's the daily chart telling us? What jumps off the screen when we bring up the chart? Well, from my vantage point, and I looked at this thing from every which way till Sunday, I'm going to give you the entire analysis. You're going right inside my head. Put on your galoshes. We're riding up the 20 period moving average. Fair enough. What's right above us is a gap that's yet to be filled. Now they've had three easy opportunities to fill the gap. They didn't do it. Maybe two out of three easy opportunities. Yesterday, maybe not. Maybe they were a little far away yesterday. But today and the day before, they certainly could have done it and they didn't do it. So now there's one of two things working as it relates to the gap. A, they're just eating time off the clock. will have no intention of stopping at the gap when they go get it. They'll just continue higher or they'll gap above it. Now, where are we? We're coming into Friday. What's Friday? We have a phony jobs number. It's the perfect recipe for one of two things. Either the gap above or they kill the tape. Now, let's talk about kill the tape for a minute. If we're being the umpire and we're being impartial, we can certainly make a case that they had a move down and this is a bearish wedges type of thing. And by the way, not filling the gap if they don't would be weakness, right? So let's just say the phony jobs number comes out and they kill the market. Now, why would they kill the market after the jobs number? It doesn't matter. Don't try and figure it out. The number is going to be big doesn't really matter how big it is everybody's expecting it to be big and everybody kind of understands that there's no way to know how big it's going to be and it doesn't matter right now there's a backstop for everybody that's out of work doesn't make things right doesn't make things better for them I'm just saying in terms of the market there really should be no surprise on the phony jobs number maybe it's something else maybe something else comes to the forefront we don't know all this stuff is an awareness that we have to take into account. But what we don't want to do is overthink the phony jobs number. Just look at the market, take the reaction at face value, and we go. So if, in fact, we have a bearish wedges thing working, then that would result in a move lower coming through the 20-period moving average and probably rapidly going to the 50 and who knows, maybe even below, we'll cover that inside the numbers if need be. The phony jobs number comes out at 8.30, so long before the market actually opens at 9.30 Eastern Time, we already know the deal of the day following the phony jobs number, whether it was meaningful or not, did the market react from it or not, can we do anything with it or not. Now, when you pull back a little bit, you say, well, we've still got this working. You have a move higher and a pullback a move higher and a pullback, a move higher and a pullback. So the theme is a move higher and a pullback, but we talked about this the other day. We know about this, so this we have to be aware of because if that breaks and we get like a retracement back and it fails, boom, that's all she wrote. It's not what we have today. It's an awareness. So both sides of the coin, both sides of the tape is that A, we're in an uptrend from the recent lows. No reason they can't go higher, no reason they can't fill the gap. They don't have to collapse. Can they collapse? Anything's always possible. We'll know in the morning. Inside the numbers members, we'll know right out of the chute. Here's an hourly chart. I want to bring up something we discussed yesterday, something that happened yesterday. The market crapped out at the end of the day. They went for the gap that we discussed ad nauseum. And by the way, maybe we didn't discuss it because that was the part that was cut out in the video. What happened was they went to fill the gap after hours. Then by the time we woke up this morning, that was all she wrote. 
They went down below the gap, but by the time the market opened today, they're gapping higher, so they've basically reset or recocked the gun. We got the gap up today, but we still got another crap out at the end of the day. So the market's really doing one hell of a job trying to shake out as many traders as possible, both longs and shorts. Remember, it's the market's job to make as many traders on both sides of the tape look like fools as much of the time as possible. That's the way the market works. That's the design of the market. Remember the 120-minute chart? So yesterday, we discussed the fact that we could certainly consider this was a bull flaggish pattern, right? Well, they collapse down at the end of the day to come and fill the gap. They don't fill the gap. So let me say something on that. A, they didn't fill the gap. They turn around and went in the other direction. After hours doesn't count in my book. Counts in some other books. Doesn't count in my book. Remember, what makes a market is that two people look at the same thing and they have a different opinion on what it says. That's, in a sense, what makes a market. So, a couple of things on the gap. They don't fill the gap, they gap up today, and they go in the other direction. So is that a sign of strength? Generally speaking, yes. We've seen that over and over and over again. Inside the numbers, members get that in the commentary when it comes up during the day. If they miss a gap and they go back in the other direction, that's a bullish sign. They're generally going to go farther up in the other direction. Look at it like this. They weren't strong enough. The bears weren't strong enough to reach the gap. They lost the fight. Period. But also, just because the bull flag was really taken off the table doesn't mean that this isn't a bull wedgish pattern, right? They came in to fill the gap, they missed the gap, but we see these all the time, and that's precisely what happened. Now, they didn't go any farther, they didn't get to the gap today, they didn't get to the big fat round number of ES2900, SPY290, but maybe they do it tomorrow. Maybe they gap up tomorrow and over everything on the phony jobs number. Maybe they go in the other direction. We don't know. We're going to take the market at face value in the morning. By the way, before we move on, I want to make mention of something. If in fact, and it's an if, we don't know, it's an if. You need to be pre-prepared for both sides of the tape. If they're going to gap up over this gap at 290.48, for example, don't be short the market. You'll likely see a squeeze pie in the face. You know the routine. They'll likely make a run for the recent highs. Here's a high at 294.88. So somewhere up in that vicinity, you can expect the market if they gap over this filling of the gap at 290.48. What about the other side? What happens if for some reason, whatever it is, and it doesn't matter what it is, the market's going in the other direction. By the time it opens, they're down a lot. What's the expectation? The expectation is that if they're going to give up the 20 period moving average and they hung out here for this long and they missed the gap and they couldn't do it, look out below. That could get ugly. Obviously, inside the numbers, members will have the real time commentary, but it could get ugly. And I'm just saying that sitting here the night before. We don't know. It's just speculation at this point. All right. Inside the numbers, you need to pay attention to this. This is no joke. This is how the money is made. I get a lot of flack from people stopping by the channel, watching the video, saying that I never say anything. I never tell you what's going to happen. Well, here's what's going to happen. So pay attention because today it happened. The market's gapping up this morning. I want you to read the notes and then I want you to focus on something at the bottom. The number we're focused on, among others, is around 2880 or so. That's been the line in the sand for a couple of days. Getting above there will promote higher prices. We know what the higher prices are. And we also know a couple of other things. I'm going to scroll a little bit. I want you to start and stop the video. And I want you to read this stuff. Here we are again in the early thoughts. They've had a difficult time getting through 2880. The early look was that they're going to get it all done, get up into the big fat round number. They made an attempt, but they never were able to do it. But we have an awareness. We know a couple of things. Whenever they're going for a specific spot, a specific big fat round number, for example, we know one of three things happens. Either they come up short and make traders looking to squeeze the last few points look like fools, 
or they hit it and they fall right away or they bust through and they take the short traders that trade short at the number and they make them cover the shorts because they get too far above and they make them feel like fools. We know all of these things. So if you're trading up to a number, you front run the number, you exit before they get there. That's the one where they pull up short. If they don't pull up short and you leave a little bit on the table, so what? It's okay to leave some for somebody else. All right, let's keep going. And I also want you to focus right here at 930. Anyone with an order in SDG, also known as SEDG, at the open was filled. Holy smokes, what a rocket ride. We haven't got to stocks on the move yet. I'm just wetting your whistle. Another awareness in terms of the S&P is that we know that under normal garden variety market conditions, whatever they're doing early in the morning, Normally, and way more often than not, they're going to have what I like to call a shakeout operation. What's a shakeout operation? They look like they're doing one thing. They're going up, they're going up, they're going up. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they pull the rug out and they shake out the Johnny-come-latelys. Who are the Johnny-come-latelys? The momentum traders, the hop-on-the-bus, late Johnny-come-latelys, FOMO traders. What's FOMO? Fear of missing out. Those are all the ones that get shaken out of the market, and it happens in both directions. The shorts get the pie in the face, the latecomers to the party in the long trade get the rug pulled out. And here's one of the things that happens, and rest assured, it's happened to everybody. It goes something like this. You get up from the computer, you want to get a sandwich, a drink, take a leak, whatever it is. The trade's going well. You're up four or five hundred bucks. Whatever the number is, everybody's got a different number. You come back three minutes later, you're down $75. What happens next? After a couple of expletives, a pounding of the fist on the table or two, you decide to sell the position. I'm going to take the small loss. The trade isn't working out. As soon as you sell it, the market turns around. It starts going back in the other direction. What do you do? You hop back on board. I don't need to tell you the rest of the script. That's the beginning of the day where we get chopped up. 18, 22 trades later, you had a pretty bad day. And you look at the market, and it didn't go anywhere. It's basically within reason in much of the same spot where you began getting chopped up. Yeah, we don't do that here. Here's a lesson. Write this down. You don't really need to write it down. Just heed it. Today, we had a couple of bang-bang plays right out of the gate from Stocks on the Move. If... Traders participated, fantastic. Some traders didn't participate, got a little frustrated. I get that. Not that anybody showed their frustration with me, but I know it can be frustrating when you miss a trade. But here's a couple or three things that happened. A couple of bang-bang plays right out of the gate. The S&P's running time off the clock. It's going sideways. It's going to pop higher. It's a matter of when and how much. So traders are in. They're waiting, waiting, waiting. They get the pop higher, so they have to take a profit. You know the rest of the story. Regardless of whether the market came back down or not, that's three pretty simple, straightforward opportunities right out of the gate, really before 10.30 or so in the morning. I already know at that point, I'm not doing much the rest of the day. Why is that? I'm going to keep the money in my pocket. I'm not saying if a trade slaps me in the face, or an opportunity slaps me in the face, of course I'll take the trade. But I'm not digging deep for the next trade, rest assured. That goes with running it like a business. 945, you see the 2882, 2880, 2882, it's in that zone. Let's go take a look. And there you have it. Everything to the right of the vertical line is today's activity. Here's a 15 minute chart of the ES. The market gaps higher after the poor close yesterday runs into that general area. What does it do? It eats time off the clock, goes back and forth in a chop shop formation, right basically underneath that zone, in that zone, right underneath it. What's that telling us? It's basically the duck. It's telling us that under normal garden variety market conditions, if the market doesn't fall apart, and using the 80-20 rule, it's not gonna fall apart, they're gonna do the deal and run higher. Our objective in running higher is get it to 2,900, 290 in the spider. They didn't quite do it. What was the high over here? The high is 2,895. What you'll also see here in the notes 
are commentary and reminders about we're going to be looking for a mid-morning pivot. Go ahead and read the notes, start and stop the video whenever you like. I think it's important that you read them, go to the charts. See for yourself. Don't take what I'm saying. Take what's in black and white and go see what you see with your own two eyes. The mid-morning pivot thing is an awareness. Whether the market's going down or going up, a lot of times we see the market make a high or make a low, and we know what to do after that. If the market starts going sideways, just eating time off the clock in that chop shop formation, it's generally going to make another push higher later or tomorrow. However, if the market comes down a lot, we have certain price areas we're looking for, and if they begin closing below certain price areas, then we know that the upside or any further advance is like off the table for the rest of the day. So that's how we treat the market. We treat the market as a series of steps or gateways, and that's just the way the market works. Later on in the day, what you'll also see here in the notes, and don't take my word for it, you see it right here in black and white, 288. That was a really important spot. That was the spot that told me that there's going to be at least an opportunity for higher numbers later. If they stayed above, and this is the Spider 15-minute chart, if they stayed above 288, it was basically the last stand. That was the line in the sand. So you'll see here they came down to run a test in the afternoon, and the low in this candle, 288.02, tried to bounce off of it. Next candle makes a high of... 288.51 so all in all what that is is really still a market at the time that was fighting 288 here's the hourly chart we're focused on the closes as long as they keep closing hourly above that's okay here in this candle here this is the same from before they make the low of 288.02 but they close at 288.32 what happened in the next hour they closed at 287.88 so at least for me, for the remainder of the day, any further advance upside rally is off the table. Where do I get 288 from? It's a secret. All right, we've got to have some fun with stocks on the move. Pay attention. Three stocks hit their price objective today. SEDG, AYX, and Carvana, CVNA down at the bottom. Write the numbers down. You know you're going to see lines anyway. These are the three deals of the day. Remember, these are posted long before the market opens. This is why I said some traders were frustrated with SEDG today. This includes the pre-market activity. So here's what happened. The stock is hovering over the number and over the number right before the market opened. Back to the regular session. In this particular case, right at the opening bell, they drop the price and when I say they, who's they in this case? They is A, the market, B, the market makers. This is where the buyers and the sellers matched up first thing in the morning, right at the opening bell. You basically had to have an order in pre-market. Not to buy it in the pre-market, you had to have an order in to be executed right at the open, so it had to be in in the pre-market. Now, I'm going to do something that I really never do for good reason. Everybody has a different account size. Everybody trades differently. But there's two reasons why I want to show you this trade. Here it is, and I know you can't see it. It's very small. This is off my, what they call a trade blotter. But I, I want to show you what happened. So I don't normally do this. I don't normally put an order in in the pre-market unless price is hovering and also I'm willing to buy another price. So this was a portion of a position. I never got the rest. But this was intended originally to be a portion. I was comfortable if the stock hit the number and went lower. However, I've seen this too many times, which is why I know it can rocket off the price. You've seen it. I've seen it. We've all seen it. So over here on the right, the bottom row, you'll see it says day plus, if you can see that at all. Day plus means the order went in in the pre-market. But look at the execution. The execution is 930 Oh, oh, right at the opening bell. The limit price, 108.45. Now somebody's going to say, but the price was 108.43. You front ran us. That's right, I did. I get front run all the time. But here's the reality. There's a spread certainly right out of the chute first thing in the morning. 
So with the spread, sometimes, in fact, all the time, you don't know exactly where the thing's going to stop. Doesn't matter. Everybody that had an order got into the trade. It went down to 108.15. On exit, you'll see the entire trade was 20 seconds long. The other reason why I decided to show this was simple. For some reason, there are traders out there, people out there, I don't know who they are, but not only do they come under the videos, but they come to my email and they question whether or not I actually take these trades. It's a little silly, obviously. I would have to be a moron not to take these trades. And here's what happened. This is your 20 second trade. In the first minute of the day, the stock was at a high of 116.88. By the way, Here's a 15 minute chart. The stock closed yesterday at one and a quarter, 125.42. How do you know it's gonna be 108.43? Well, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be 108.43 or somewhere within pennies of that, or 104.19, which is why that's the second number. You'll see it never got there. But the question is, how do you do this? Look at the low in this candle, 108.15. I told you yesterday, it's not catching a falling knife. These stocks are headed for a destination. Here's the other question that I'm gonna answer, and this was a little bit lucky on my part. I'm the first to admit when I get lucky. I'm okay with being lucky. How do you get out of the trade with that type of gain? It happens so fast. One of the ways, and you have to have a trading platform to do this, one of the ways to exit a trade is with what's called a trailing stop. You can put in an automated trailing stop. So when this happened, and the thing was immediately up several dollars, I actually just hit my trailing stop. I think it had maybe 15 or 17 or 19 cents as the trailing stop. It was really whatever was in there from the prior trade, really from yesterday, or whenever the last time I took a trailing stop was. It's just a field in my trading window, if you will. And I just hit it. I just loaded up the amount of shares. In this case, it was 200. And by the way, these don't have to be tremendous trades. That was a lot of money with 200 shares in 20 seconds. It's a gift. So when all this happened, you have to admit, and I'm proud to admit, there was a level of luck involved on the exit. I hit the thing, and when it executed, I looked down at how much I made. I had no idea how much it was going to be. I couldn't calculate it that fast. I didn't even realize how much it was up from my entry. It was all in a matter of split seconds. It doesn't always happen like that. In fact, it hardly ever happens like that. So if you're looking at this and you're saying, I can't ever do that, you're right. Most of the time, you can't do it. Most of the time, it doesn't happen like this. After you've seen this stuff over and over and over again, you have the roadmap for it. You have the schematic for it. I've seen this before. I've traded it before. I know what to expect and I know what not to expect. You can't chase price. And most of the time, if you put an order at some far off the beaten path place, it's never going to get there. Second one on the board, AYX. Stock closed yesterday at, what was the price? 123.14, getting a buzz cut at the open, 110.76 on the board. I know this video is getting long in the tooth. My apologies. The rest is history. You see what happened. The stock was up at 120 later in the day. How about Carvana? This falls into the redonkulous camp. Stock closed Wednesday at 91 and change. Getting a haircut, 84 even was the spot. Spiked it by a little bit. The rest is history. It's up over 100 bucks same day. I've said this over and over. You never know which ones this is going to happen to. You have to be a participant. What do we got going over in camp IWM? Same deal as yesterday. The market is above these moving averages and that's okay can't get below them that's trouble leading to the upside it's my number one favorite leading indicator up 1.72 percent today against an spy up about one and a half percent so no trouble here but we know the routine it's all the same market if they're going to get a gap up in the morning or a gap down in the morning they're all going the same way how about the folks down at the transportation department now this one can't get above the moving averages we talked about this yesterday. It's my number one favorite canary in the coal mine. And you have to take a look at the bear case with this one. This is looking more and more like a move lower and a bear flag pattern in the making riding underneath these moving averages or at least riding both moving averages one way or the other. This will generally result in a continuation move to the downside. 
This is a puzzle piece, folks. It's on the table. Here's a little short hop, by the way. Look up at the top of the screen where the price is on the bid and the ask. 288.49 by 288.50. The 288 is important. They got below it at the end of the day, but now they're back above it after hours. It's important. It's not a magic number. It's not 281, but right now, it's important. Same routine with the transports. If we get a gap up in the morning, everything's going to follow. And if that happens, you're going to take this bear flag pattern off the table. If we get a gap lower in the morning, we're going to revert back to the transports and say, hey, that was the canary in the coal mine. How about the folks out in Silicon Valley, the queues? Any trouble here? No. They made the new high. They closed up at the new high. And then you're going to get coming over the top. Yeah, but they put in a doji candle. I don't think that's important. I think they just simply closed at a new high. The financials. Now, the financials were up almost 3% today. That's a good showing, and they were leading things in the upward direction. But they're still below those two moving averages, the 50 and the 20 period moving average. They're riding down, putting pressure, downward pressure, on this chart, on the XLF. However, take a look at the weekly chart for a second. So you have this big breakup candle, and we're going back and forth in a relatively large chop shop formation from a weekly perspective. And what we can say from a longer term perspective is, as long as they don't close the week below the low of this breakup candle, then they should have another move higher. Look at the hourly chart. What's this one telling us? We have a move higher, and we have one of these bullish, pullback, bullish, not a flag, but really a wedge-ish pattern. And this generally, it's like a coil, releases in the other direction or the upward direction. It's kind of like a flag pattern, but different. And if that happens, and let's say that does happen, and we'll just pick an arbitrary number up here, 2250. Well, what happens at 2250? All of a sudden, they're above the moving averages, and we start discussing they're going to go fill the gap. If they can't trade through the moving averages once they got below, if they can't get back up trading through the trading day, then they'll gap above it if they're going to get up at all. If the bears have their way, they won't be able to, and we'll find ourselves with a lower market in the morning, most likely the excuse will be the phony jobs number. The simple reason will just be a failure. Smash Mouth, it's a tweener. It's in the middle of this recent range right here. From this low to this high, you're in the middle, hovering on a moving average. We can't make heads or tails anything out of this. Up 1.5% on par with the broader market. Technically speaking, there's nothing wrong with the SMH or the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you and that without you, these videos are not possible? That is true and accurate information. I'm David Frost, and that, my friends, was everything I wanted to and intended to discuss today, so we're going to give it a wrap. Thanks again for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.